Share It Goes to the Movies is a free podcast made possible by Rich's lack of a social life, as well as our amazing supporters. For as little as $1 a month, you can access tons of extra content each week. Visit JaredGoesToTheMovies.com and click support us. Enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. I'm Jared Reddick. And this is a podcast. Jarrett goes to the movies. Hopefully you have seen or heard one of my many musical endeavors. And if you have, then you know how much I love movies. This is movie commentary with no movie knowledge. This podcast is me and my friend Rich talking about movies that we like. But my name's on it because I'm famous. This is Jarrett goes to the movies. Still. Okay, we're starting now. Now, oh, before we get to the meat of this thing, uh, do you at the present time have any knowledge of the whereabouts of a Mr. Jack Burton or his truck? Oh, God, will you leave him alone? Mr. Shen, please. You could be in a great deal of trouble. Half a city block explodes in a ball of green flame. Green flame! I mean, so all hell is breaking loose here. And there are people who say you're involved, that you might be responsible that you're a very dangerous man. Now, if you're protecting Jack you Burton... You leave Jack Burton alone. We are in his debt. He showed great courage. Man, I tell you what, like, to me, the guy looked like the guy from Gremlins. Uh, like, the first guy that he sees, you know, when he goes into the oh, yeah. shop, you know a what I mean? Bit. And um, here's what I'm doing. I'm fucking going to see if he was in it, like right here (laughs) while I'm starting the fucking show. Do we want to restart? He was not. No. And it wasn't him. Because here's what I was going to say. Anytime you see the fucking guy, the first guy from Gremlins, like get the fuck out of there because some (laughs) shit's going to go down. But they're so cute. Yeah. I know to start with though. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like puppies. It's well, I don't know about that. I mean, like like some puppies. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know, I mean, I don't know what, in what way are you... (laughs) Boy, you just stepped right into that, Jesus Jared. Christ, guys. <laughs> I was so cute to start with. Hi, everybody. My name is Jarrett. This is a podcast. It's called Jarrett Goes to the Movies. And it is great to be here entertaining you on your morning drive or your afternoon run or just while you're taking a poop. Whatever whatever you're doing right now, <laughs> thank you for listening. I, uh, I'm. It's, it's a privilege to be in your ears right now in no way... Do I mean that sexually? Um, I want to welcome my good friend Rich, who is with me as always. I am. How's it going, buddy? I'm great. Now, Rich just had a coughing fit because uh, <laughs> we had a new thing, a new feature uh, in our pre-show thing. We're gonna put it. We're gonna try to put this on the Facebook. It's called Joke Time, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it worked out real good. Maybe too good. Yeah. From now on, no, no taking a sip of anything. <laughs> During joke time. During joke time. My lovely wife, Casey, has just joined us here. Hello. How are you, baby? I'm doing You're fresh, just great. You're freshly bathed. Yep. And uh, it's good to see you. The uh, the golden boy, Will Vark, is here. The the king of sting, Kitty Corner Will. Right over why don't, why don't you talk about everybody else's like <laughs> shower habits? Because <laughs> we wait on you to get up here from the bathtub. Will yeah. took a shower this morning at yeah. about 9. <laughs> no, actually, it was at 7.30. 7.30. Oh you have like a real morning. He doesn't give a shit. I like, took one right after my poop. What the fuck is 7.30? On the way over. And he doesn't want to... Wait, you took a poop and a shower on the way over? How the fuck did you do that? I took that? a shower after a poop. Yeah. To get the butthole clean? Me. Get the butthole do you, clean? Do, don't you, you hate... Shower. Yeah, don't you hate the post-shower poop? Yeah, because you're all steamy and... Well, if that happens, do you get back in and, like, wash off again? <laughs> no, I just make sure I go beforehand. Yeah, yeah but, I, I don't like it when it taints my taint from being right. clean. And here's, here's the problem it. with sitting down to pee is because you turn the shower water on, mm-hmm. you go to pee, and yeah. all of a sudden you're in there for 20 minutes. Yeah, it's true, but the the water's real warm. Yeah, stop mirrors all, yourself. Mirrors all fogged up and shit. <laughs> I, uh, I, we have this shower head that, you you know, it can make like the three different little streams or whatever. And mm-hmm. one of the streams is just like this jet that do goes straight down. That's what cleans Jarrett's butthole. Yeah. And so what oh, I no. do, um, <laughs> I just, I like spread my butthole open and just let that thing get in there. Like as, and then I'd stay there like as long as I can hold the position. And, Does it uh, curve up? 
No, there, there's a way that I can stand on my tiptoes. It's just like going from spray to stream. You know what I mean? Like yeah. on a Windex bottle. There's just a way I can get it to where it hits just perfect. I'm and, just like uh, brushing my And feet. then I kind of like go up and down on the tiptoes to kind of get like all, like all of it, like up underneath <laughs> and everything. And uh, so one day I was just like, I was saying to, to Casey, I'm like, you know what? I think I have the cleanest butthole in four counties. And she goes... I don't think so because I take three baths a day. And I'm like, you're right. You're sitting in water literally a third of your day. Yeah. And so uh, we have some clean buttholes here in the Red I have house. a mysterious washcloth in my shower that oh. if, if someone took a shower in, might mistakenly think I'd wash my face with that. Oh, no. Uh, oh, that's just for your butthole? <laughs> but oh why does it stay in there? Why wouldn't you get a new one every time? But either way, if you like, used Christ, it twice. How many rags like, we have? I know, but like it, it's, it's self cleaning. It's not self cleaning. Oh, it's not. That's you're getting poo poo on there. <laughs> um, that is not. I'm getting poo poo. Like, on what, what if you? What if it actually leaves a mark? Will you take it out then, or do you not check? Is it brown? I black? Wa- I mean, I wash it. Gray. Like in like after I'm done. Right. It, I wash it with off. Tide. Yeah. It's like I. You don't have Tide in there. You lied. And then where am I applying this again? Right back to my butt. To butthole, right? right so you so take that... the the old butthole, <laughs> rub it on the new butthole, right? I don't wash my butthole. <laughs> no, no. I'm afraid yeah. if I touch it, I might be gay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. No. There's not. You know, I used to just think that, like, the shower, like, when I, many years ago, I thought the shower water just, you know, because they do say that your back is the cleanest area on your body because most people turn away from the shower and it's just constantly being um, showered with the uh, with the water. I forgot where I was Who's heading. they? Okay, God Leave damn me. it! I I fucking you know that that's why I won't put that in a song. What the I, word they? It's one of my rules. I don't. I hate the whole like they say that we're gonna uh, be all right, and I'm like, who the fuck are they? You know, like <laughs> we don't care about what they say. There's like fucking bands in my genre that have made a career out of they want to keep us down, and I'm like, who the fuck? <laughs> Are no these angry people? You. Like, where are these marches just trying to keep down the fucking little sad <laughs> pop punk kids? Where does this happen? <laughs> anyway, that comes up a lot. Like, I mean, because we, me and Linus write a lot of songs for ourselves, for a lot of people. And he hates that I have that rule because it'll just be like, well, you know, we could just be like, they say this. And I'm like, no. <laughs> No, it's got to be our friends. I don't know or, them. Yeah, I don't know who they are. You know, you can't just be that. I'm too specific. He's like, well, if a song's too specific, then it doesn't relate to everybody. And I'm like, well, we got to find a workaround. <laughs> and so we do. I like that rule. That's what happens. I get several rules. Uh, if you want to write a hit song, first of all, you you need you should probably have some whistling in there. People love whistling. <laughs> Uh, you should also stutter or in the song. Harmonica. You should 100% stutter in the song so people are like, try, try, try again. People like that shit. Uh, and ca- and then counting. People is, is love... 19, 19, 19? Is that a stutter? That's actually a double deucer. That is counting uh-huh. and because it's numbers, it right. classifies as counting. It's officially a stutter, but we, I fucking take both on it. Got it. You know? And uh, behind... But not like counting like 20. No. It's like, one, two, three, four. Like that? Yeah, or like, or like, one, nothing wrong with me. You know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I used to like that song a lot. You know, yeah. two, nothing wrong with... See, there's nothing happening. <laughs> there's, there's still nothing he tells wrong. You, he tells you four times that there's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> I have to tell you that all the time. So he's counting and stuttering at the same time. And what a fucking massive hit. And I'm pretty sure, actually, that if you heard like just the vocal track singled, it'd be like, let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> there would be whistling. I'm almost positive. And no theys. No, no there theys. is no theys. So like no. one, they, 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 they. <laughs> they? See? Oh man, it's good to be here. Gosh, we're fresh off of a trip to San Antonio. Casey and I went down to San Antonio to see the great comedian Anthony Jeselnik, and we also got to see Ginny uh, Johnson. We had a tremendous time. That was my birthday present. One of my birthday presents for my wife. She always so got me. A massive Steelers uh, fire pit nice. that we will be using at night in the near future. And um, did you give me something else? I painted you a picture. You painted me an amazing Steve Martin picture oh, nice. um, to go. So now I've got a Richard Pryor, a Steve Martin, and a huge George Carlin. It's not up yet. Oh. She's actually going to uh, glue the arrow through the head on there. And uh, No way. Yeah, That's so it's, awesome. It's got like a whole cool like 3D thing. They happened. had that in the movie. Did you notice that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah I did First notice thing I that. thought of. Yeah. 
We had a great time. The Dolly Rots dropped in and paid a visit to us at our house. And then Casey's talking to him about where they're headed and where we're headed. And It was the same place? Yeah. They were just like, we're going to be in uh, San Antonio on Saturday. She's like, so are we. So we had all intentions of making it to their show, but we didn't. We were vacationed out. It was time for us to go back to the room. But we hung out with them during the day. We did. We went to the Alamo. We took the kids to the, to the we took the Dolly Tots. Did you go to, visit mm-hmm. the basement? No, we didn't. No, no. You know, um, Eileen is very proud of this pot she made. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know who that is? Jan Hooks. Jan um, Hooks. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. That's right. Um, Never saw it. We had a great time, though. It was a little warm for the kids. So then we we went to uh, where where you always go in San Antonio, Margaritaville, and uh, we had uh, I didn't have a margarita, I had a Miller Lite. When you say for the kids, is that a euphemism? No, we actually had children with us. Oh, okay. So the Dolly Rots have two children, but we had a great time. Oh, so you did around. hang out with them, you just didn't go to their show. Yeah, yeah, we, that, make, oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. we, we didn't make it there. It was, we were, we were playing at like midnight. We were together for like four or five hours. I got you. yeah. So and, and just hanging out, and then. Me and Casey. You've seen them play before. Well, that's what they said. But (laughs) then we ended up where we always end up in the middle of nothing to do. Dave and Buster's. (laughs) We did go to Dave and Buster's. Yeah. And then then after that, it was like, let's get some dinner and get the fuck out of here. Let's go like watch something on cable. Casey did not make it five minutes into the room and was asleep. It was crazy. Is asleep a euphemism? No, we had already done that. Sleep's asleep. Yeah. We had already done that a bunch. Um, Got it. Yeah, we were at Dave and Buster's. Um, we had a great trip, though. How are things with you? How's the dating life? You're dating a Russian. <laughs> it's all starting to make sense now. This whole Trump thing. <laughs> you know, you supported Trump. This is Will's joke, by the way, that he did in the pre-show. Will's the one that called attention to this, and I'm just like, I'm the writer. I go. Will's like, yeah, it's like the whole Trump thing, and I'm just like, yeah, you, you're. Fu- I'm gonna call your fucking brother and tell him, like, you know, that whole thing with you guys not talking anymore. <laughs> Um, you know, because of all the Trump shit. Well, he's dating a Russian. I had to. That's what we do. It's Trump's America. So, mm-hmm. uh, do you call her things- Vladimir in bed? Oh, that's <laughs> no. sexy. But things are going good? Yeah. It seems like things are good, and here's how I know. You were super late tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and and you could t- and you were still doing your notes at like 5 o'clock, which means you didn't spend the, the usual time that you spend on your weekends. Well, yeah. Well, and that was because I went to John the Bass Player's wedding. So How'd he that is, go? He is now married. This is a beautiful wedding. It was yep. really nice. Did you get hammered? Uh, we did get a little hammered. I um, and that's that's why I didn't get all my stuff done. Until I saw his late. wife, um, and I don't think I've ever met her, but you she have. she seems nice. Hot Heather. She's at my party. Uh, She's the one that looks just like Zoe. So okay, weird. yeah. I mean, <laughs> that is weird. I vaguely remember that. <laughs> there was so much going on at the fucking yeah. party, man. It really was. I've I mean, gotten just, three that shit's getting cut out looks already, and this thing just started. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? It's a, he's still got that power. You know? He's it's like, a, ha, ha, Vladimir, fuck It might you. be the reason. He just got a... <laughs> Rich just got a girlfriend. It might be the reason why we've put the brakes on video because once it goes video, there's no editing. <laughs> so you told him he couldn't stop being funny. I mean, I just want him to start being Here's funny. Here's what's funny: is she she listened. I to, was joking about that. You're super funny. Thanks. She listened to the second episode because she wanted to know what this whole thing was about. Right. And after the episode, she goes. Why did you make me listen to this? Oh, no. <laughs> what was the second episode? That was National Lampoon's Vacation. So there was the whole uh, trifecta of pillow fucking. Oh, yeah. When I f- fucked the furniture. Oh, yeah. yeah. You and fucked the furniture? I thought Jared fucked no, the furniture. No, he sure. said I fucked the furniture. Jared fu- definitely did. I fucked furniture. I've of never said that did. I didn't do that. Didn't All fuck people furniture. fucked oh, furniture. That's yes. not true. I do not fuck furniture. I've you never, have, for I sure. Have, I have, have not. Furniture. All right, Will. I don't know, man. Maybe that's a California thing. I you repressed it. You could. Um, <laughs> Maybe. And then there was the. She, Maybe it fucked you back. She, and then she gave me Maybe she I gave me shit for the uh, Magnum PI shorts like the entire wedding. Are those oh, the yeah. shorts you're going to be wearing? Are those? And I can't do Russian accent. I wish I could do it because it's. Does so she adorable. actually have the oh, accent? Yeah, she has a Russian accent for sure. Does she like leave the word the out and stuff? Like she the, does that occasionally. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't that use the. Has to be super sexy. It is the sexiest. <laughs> you, everyone knows how much I love accents. It's like yeah. a dream come true for me. And she's hot. Yeah, you fucking did. Hold on just one second. Let me pause for something right. a little bit more important. Jarrett's opening a bill. So anyway, she told me that she goes, I'm not going to listen anymore because I don't want to suck the romance out of our honeymoon phase. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I said, you know what? That's a great idea. I think that's actually good. I mean, you know, um, 
not to compare us in any way Ever. to the sh- no 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 not me and you i'm saying like to the no, to, the guys. howard stern thing uh-huh. but yeah i mean i think that that howard stern's wife now was very selective as far as like you know or especially when he was still shocking now he's more of just like a interviewer He's a really good interviewer that fucks with his staff all the time. That's right, the yeah. show. Yeah, like if we break up, like your new girlfriend shouldn't go back through the archive <laughs> for sure. I definitely think that's probably true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like I... Yeah. It's we, al- we won't let her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, she'll be on the show. You guys will be, it's like... Uh, Casey, which of these albums have you not listened to up here uh, on the wall? <laughs> well... She's listened to all of them. <laughs> yeah, all of them. Uh, you guys been like doing anything fun besides you know the stuff you do early on in the dating and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, she made me retry sushi and I liked it. Yeah, what'd you have? I had the. I mean, I don't. I just had just something that sounded Mexican okay. because I thought I don't really like fish and I don't like Japanese flavors. Right. So was, I, it, was it like the fried chicken one with jalapeno? <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> don't lie to me. It was pretty close. <laughs> it was one was called the Tex and the other one was called the jalapeno. So yeah. it had the Mexican flavors yeah. on sushi. I thought it was delicious. I can't good. wait to go back. We've had the Texan before. The Texan's yeah. good. Two out of our three kids <laughs> recently said like, we love sushi. So mm-hmm. we took them all out for sushi the other day. It turns out. They don't fucking like sushi. <laughs> you know, they like California rolls. We made a pre- yeah, but we did make a pretty good dent in it. And uh, but yeah, I mean, essentially, it's just we we had to tell Jack, it's like, dude, this is uh, sushi is no time to get adventurous. Yeah, he got you know the what I mean? eel like, on the spicy tuna. Uh, oh, yeah, on it the is. Thing. And that motherfucker was fifteen ninety five, and it just sat there. You know, it like. <laughs> now I'm like, Everett, try it. some eel. And he's like crying. He's like, Please don't make me eat that. Eel. Why are we out of the one that we actually he wanted? Goes, is that a fish? And he has no idea what he's been eating the whole time. Like, <laughs> so I'm a little disappointed. I have a girlfriend, and I don't get like any kind of a song from you. Like, what do rich, you mean? Rich has a girlfriend. You know, something. No, it's more interesting when you're on Tinder. No. Well, okay. uh, no, it's, uh, it's fine. First of all, uh, edit that out because uh, you don't want to blow the fucking joke when it happens. My oh. wife and I have been married for 18 years and you haven't written a fucking, fucking song for us. Edit this out too. <laughs> no, actually, leave it all in. Leave it all in so it, it'll just show how ungrateful you are when it actually happens. You got a fucking Grammy nominated songwriter writing you a fucking song about your stupid fucking dating life. Oh, yeah, shit. you got a Tinder song. I want a song about my stupid fucking dating life. I made you one. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't mean stupid. Uh, and you guys just had your anniversary like a couple of months ago, right? Or a month or so. You, you mean in October? October. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, October. God damn, a lot's happened since October. No, my birthday was a couple weeks ago. That's what it was. You missed that. Did I? We missed your birthday. Holy. We fucking missed your birthday? When yeah. was your oh, birthday? Oh, that's right. It was... Um, that Sunday that we get, we skipped. Oh, we skipped his birthday because you were out of town. Son of no, a bitch. No, you got sick. You, ate, you drank too much. Oh, yeah, that happens. Why didn't you mention it on the Wedding Crashers? I guess it's our job to do that. Yeah, because yeah. he's the we best gift. Terrible. He's the best gift giver ever. Now we've got a quadruple Crazy. birthday. He fucking shows up to every party, like, right on time. I have an brings excuse. something awesome. I have just gotten a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I have an excuse. I drank too much. Oh, that's true. I also drank too much. That's what yeah. my parents always used to say on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> We're the worst. We're the worst. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. Again, this is a show called Jarrett Goes to the Movies, and each week we talk about a different movie. Uh, the theme song says movies that we like. Um, I, I had no idea where we'd be 80 episodes in, but... <laughs> Um, 73 we 73 episodes in but uh, you know that, that we they may not all be winners but do your best to get through it when you can and uh, I'm not saying I don't like this one I'm just saying hey you know don't give a shit you know because fucking people have different tastes and stuff you know what I mean <laughs> um, obviously you're listening to this so you know that you can find us where you are right now we also love our supporters on Patreon. If you want to, if you love the podcast, why not become a member of the winning team by going to patreon.com and searching for Jarrett Goes to the Movies for as little as a dollar a month, just like Keith Vaughn said at the beginning, you can get hours and hours of content and we're actually about to realign all of the awards and stuff and it's about to get crazy. We're about to start giving away um, things where you, at a certain tier, you get shit in the mail a couple of times a year and things like that, so... A lot of fun. A lot of fun on Patreon. <laughs> How about that? Um, 
<laughs> Subscriber challenge right on James, who is my favorite person not to email back, got Simon Gerling <laughs> to subscribe to the podcast. So that's a uh, Ron and James gets an extra point. I want to thank our new supporters, Daniel Cotton, possibly my favorite Englishman. Did you guys know that? Yeah, I like that guy. I love him. He got yeah. his nose busted oh, you know open. And got his nose busted at a Bowling for Soup show and still managed to come to like five more. Yeah, now he just like puts people's pictures on Kit Kat bars. Yeah, they, well, there's that? that thing too. Yeah. Uh, Becky is a new $5 supporter. She is just like Madonna, no last name. And a new $50 supporter who is now an executive producer, Abby Borden. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and she's in five questions now, too. Oh, good. That's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. So, she's she'll be... Uh, uh, later on, Yay. you'll hear five questions, and you could be a member of that. I want to thank our executive producers, uh, who are all Patreon supporters. David Murray, Ashley C., Sheila Ray Wonder, Wendy Croft, David Dooley, Diane Small, Big Chris Whitehead, Lucy Murray, Radon James, Eddie Weiss, colonblowband.com, Lisa Wenzel, Sean Umbeck, Joel Robinson, Nigel Watson, Greg Pascal, Chris Holt, Terry McCullough, and Abby Borden, the new girl. Yay! We're at 19 producers, executive producers right now. Uh, when we get to 25, I'm going to do a private stage at show for all of our executive producers, oh, all wow. requests. Oh, cool. Awesome. So um, we need six more. <laughs> Which and, song and then, should I sing? Uh, that's just it. <laughs> yeah, you should have to be here and back me up. To, will, you too. You, you guys can't afford my private internet show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this week we're talking about Big Trouble in Little China. I was surprised that this movie came out in 1986. I thought it was older than this for some reason. Yeah, it like felt older. I don't really know. But like a 70s kind of thing? Synopsis goes like this. Something. An all-American trucker gets dragged into a centuries-old mythical battle in Chinatown. Um, I think that pretty much sums it up. It's actually not bad. Again, it's no Groundhog Day. But I would assume that Rich... You probably have an alternative synopsis for this. I actually did my homework this oh, week. Oh, hey, yeah. we did it. All right, Big Trouble in Little China. John Wayne plays John Wayne in this Western about two Chinese factions that... Oh, wait, John Wayne, uh, he's dead? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, how about Kurt Russell plays John Wayne in this Western about a Chinese... Jesus Christ. Okay, you want to set in the 1980s with a bunch of terrible synth music and not an awesome Western? Okay, fine, fine. Kurt Russell plays John Wayne as, what, maybe a truck driver? Okay, great. An all-American trucker that gets dragged into a centuries-old mystical battle in Chinatown. <laughs> nice. I'm immediately confused because I thought this was your pick. It was, I know it wasn't not my pick. Will has no? figurines. It, yeah. it might have been my pick. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, I wasn't around when you put it on the schedule, right, yeah. but... Yeah. We're going to blame yeah, Will for this one? I'm not blaming anybody. Will, because this is for your birthday. Yay! Yay. Happy birthday, Will. Happy birthday, Will. Thank, Thank you, guys. It. Thank you so you, much. You kind of ruined the surprise earlier with your mention of your birthday That's being right. missed. But here it is. We, we got, fucking suck. We got oh. you the last drink of that whiskey over there. Yay! Yay. Your cigarettes are in their car. <laughs> this movie stars Kurt Russell as Jack Burton. Uh, Kurt Russell in this movie... Uh, it literally seems like every single one of his lines is like John uh, Wayne is like, well, it's, it just seems like it's shot separately from everything and then just put in there, <laughs> which, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that's bad. You know, this, movie, this guy's a fucking child star. He's been doing it a long time. You've never seen this movie, right? Uh, I, so I would say that I probably had to have at least seen parts of it because there's definitely a lot of things that I recognize. Um, this must be some sort of like big time cult classic. It is, yeah. Because there are certain things in it where, um, for example, the Kim Cattrall thing when she's in all the makeup at the uh, towards mm -hmm. the end or whatever, like that to me seems like one of those things I've seen a bunch of times. Um, same with uh, the one guy that, with the you know with the that looks like one of those little balls and spencers that you touch on the sides or whatever, and it shoots the <laughs> right. stuff out. It looked like he was dressed up as one of those, right? But yeah, I mean, it, it seems like this must be like a cult classic touch. She, it's a huge cult classic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's very, very popular. Right. And, uh, but it, was it- You're not supposed to like it. Like, if you saw it right now for the first time, I can't imagine you like it. Right. Well, and I, I that's kind of what I thought. You know, um, well, we'll get into how I felt about it. I'm not saying at all that I didn't like it. Uh, I, it, it just felt very, very 80s. Oh, yeah. Um, 
and and but 80s in a different way when i say 80s most of the movies that we've done thus far were in the 80s when i say 80s i don't mean uh 16 candles i mean beverly hills cop right. or you know this these movies all kind of have that same feel you know mm-hmm. only the music in beverly hills cop was way cheesier and way fucking better <laughs> <laughs> the music was so bad the intro the intro song when he's driving in his truck that is um what's his name the director and his friends had a band. Oh, they, are you serious? And they did that all that synth shit. And <laughs> no shit. There is the cheesiest video online for it. They're called the the. Um, That's hilarious. The Coupe de Ville's or something like that. Uh-huh. And there's in John Carp. Carpenter, right? John Carpenter. Yeah. Yeah. He's like the lead singer and he's like the ugliest fucking guy you've ever seen. <laughs> oh my God. The cheesiest voice. It's it's the best. You should who did, watch it. it. Who did you have? It wasn't John Carpenter. Who was Wes Craven? That's who you had. A- yeah, I did a movie with Wes Craven. Who you guys brought up today. You guys were like, uh, it was on Facebook today. Our Facebook page, Jarrett Goes to the Movies. Oh, about the and curse. Somebody Someone was like, the posted movie. the DVD for oh, Curse. Ryan, 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 yeah, and yeah. you're like, hey, does it show her boobs? And he goes, well, it, it's if, if, it, if it doesn't, it wasn't worth the money. And I'm like, <laughs> she doesn't make it five minutes into the movie. She's the first one that gets killed. Damn, it's I'm still singing when it happens. <laughs> um, Kim Cattrall plays Gracie, um, who, uh, you know, I have a, a wacky thing for Kim Cattrall, but not in this movie. It's yeah. the creepy fake contacts. Yeah. What 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 else was she? Was she in mischief or is that Kelly Preston? She's on Sex in the City. Sex in the City. Yeah, Sex in the that's City. Right. That's right. So. She okay. was she, be, before this. She's in I the think, mannequin. mannequin. Well, she did mannequin, mannequin after this. After this, right? I think before this, she was in Porky's. Oh, right. Are we okay. doing Porky's? That's it. Porky's. You're exactly right. And she was also in Police Academy. Yeah, Police Academy. Yeah. So. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah that's she was right. like the hot girl trainee. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, in the kitty corner, it's Will, here to tell us, how is Jared connected? All right, Will, how am I connected to this movie? All right, you haven't been this closely connected to a movie. I don't think since we started. No, since Greece. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, Kim Cantrell starred in Big Trouble Little China. Yep. And she was also in the movie Curse with Jarrett Redding. No, Crossroads. Woo! Crossroads. She was in Crossroads. Oh, I mean, Crossroads. That's okay. That's all right. They both start with C's <laughs> and uh, totally fine. But she was in Crossroads. Did you me. see her boobies in real life in Crossroads? No, I didn't. I've never seen her boobies in real life. But I, I'm going to be honest. I, I want to. <laughs> you know, I mean, just to verify. Did you not see him on Sex and the City? Not in real life. They used to show real boobs on the on the HBO. <laughs> but not in real life. See them in real life. I had a huge crush on her in the mannequin. Oh yeah, I liked her I mannequin know. for sure. And I look back on it now. I look back at the pictures now, and I'm I kind of don't see it anymore. After it's mannequin, weird. I thought to myself, I am really attracted to Egyptian girls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Also in this movie, James Hong, who I believe will was saying maybe he might have been in a few things before. Ah! <laughs> I was looking at his I- IMDb. He literally is in every TV show from 1955 on. And here's one of them. Excuse me, I- I'm expecting a call. Costanza? Yes, I just got a call. Uh, I yell, Cartwright! right? Cart right! Just like that. Nobody came up, I hang up. <laughs> well, was it for Costanza or? Yes, yes, that's it. Nobody answered. <laughs> Was it a woman? Yes, yes. I tell her, you're not here. She said curse word, I hang up. <laughs> she called. He yelled Cartwright. <laughs> I missed her. Who's Cartwright? <laughs> I'm Cartwright. <laughs> You're not Cartwright. Of course I'm not Cartwright! <laughs> oh, man. Cartwright! Yeah, you would think he would have had to have been in that show. But, but, you know, and more recently, he's the dad on Kung Fu Panda. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why I recognize huge, that yeah. voice. Yeah, huge, huge movie, that one. He was in a Godzilla movie. Ah! Um, Victor Wong <laughs> plays Egg Shen. Uh, he was 
in The Golden Child and The Last Emperor. Oh, which, Golden Child, yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. The, uh, is, <laughs> the, give me the knife. I want the knife. I, 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 I want please. the knife. I always laugh out, oh, you're just going to wipe your booger right there on yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, better, you, you, better get, you better do some of that before it frees up and you cut yourself. <laughs> That's a great movie. Great, great movie. One other cast member I wanted to point out was Al Leong. Um, he's that long-haired dude yeah. that like has the thing. He played Genghis Khan in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. But but if you looked up any of these three dudes, yeah, you would one hundred percent know them because they've been in so much stuff. Is this gonna get ugly now? Huh? I hope not, because I thought what we were here, racial differences notwithstanding, was just a couple of old friends, you know, just both of us Californians. Ah, oh, shit, Wang. It's only a game. Nothing on double. This knife cuts this ball in half. Nothing a double. Bullshit. Nothing a double, Jack. Why, man? Don't be stupid. I need the money. I got near a thousand bucks here, Wang. One thousand one hundred forty-eight, Jack. Okay. But not that bottle. <laughs> this bottle. There's no way that trick ever works. There's only three ways to cut a bottle like that, and that's not one of them. No, there's no way. <laughs> was the point not to like hit him in the face? <laughs> no, the point was to cut the bottle in half. He was saying that it always works at home or some shit. Well, his, like, his chi was out of balance. Oh, yeah. his body and his spirit wasn't no, in the yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, oh, this dude, that uh, he did not know martial arts at all until he did this movie. Oh, wow. No kidding. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it it's almost like he didn't take lessons until halfway through the filming. <laughs> he probably did because all of a sudden he just knew all kinds of shit. It was crazy. <laughs> also, can does anybody anybody think they know the dialogue in this scene? What term is being used that absolutely drove me fucking nuts? Oh yeah, where he reverses nothing, nothing or double. double, nothing or double, <laughs> nothing. He does that throughout the entire. Yeah, I know movie. it <laughs> was driving me. I wonder fucking if they did that on crazy. purpose just to, to make to it sound been, like right? he wasn't. English was in his first language. That's what I'm, I was thinking, too. Because the dude is totally American. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. What's life like for truckers? Because I think that's a whole... Apparently, like, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> that's a Mortal whole... Kombat! I, I feel like trucker <laughs> life is, is a whole different life. And the rules are completely different. I think it's cocaine and hookers, isn't it? <laughs> I think at one point it was. I think it's a little bit more regulated. No, now. I think it's no. just hookers. I think they actually had to really pay attention to the road. Actually, I work with my family business, and we did temp workers in the trucking industry, and it was fucking cocaine and hookers. Are you yeah. serious? Really? Yes, totally. I think wow. it's pretty... I mean, we've definitely seen... I know seen, they have some families that... I have slept at many a truck stop, uh, but I've definitely seen the truck stop hooker or two. And uh, Interesting. Yeah, you know, I mean, there, but it's nice though because the, you know they can shower first, right? You know, because there's nice showers there and stuff. Um, Is yeah, it a hooker friendly feet. shower? Like, are there rules? <laughs> no, I'm not <laughs> saying that the shower. hookers, the the dudes, oh. you know, they've been sitting for a while. You the got hookers swampy don't balls. Shower? Come on! No, are Why you I kidding shower me? Shower before you screw a truck stop hooker. What? <laughs> like to, just to be polite. It's after the swampy balls. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that could be. It. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna marry her, Jack. Oh God! I've known her since we were kids. I haven't seen her in five years. I came here alone. I worked my fingers till they bled. Before you knew me, Jack, I slept on the floor. I saved every nickel to bring her here because I love her so much, Jack. I can't eat, sleep, or think properly without her anymore. She's going to put my whole life in order. Boy, listen to me, huh? Real tough guy, yeah? You sound a little nervous, pal. That's why the bottle didn't slice. My mind and my spirit are going north and south. Yeah, so now we know the reason. Maybe I should have... I jumped to a fucking conclusion that it was a stupid trick. <laughs> this you was know? the most unbelievable part that this girl waited five years for it. That was yeah. the most unbelievable part. You don't know what, don't don't know know, what she's been doing while she's waiting. <laughs> yeah, that's a, true. She just wants a, to come to America. <laughs> there's yeah. a bunch of... I mean, if she's getting treated like that right when she gets off the plane, who the fuck knows where she was tied up when she was in China? <laughs> Man, you, you know, know it's I mean? you know it's pre nine eleven. These fuckers have knives and all kinds of shit at the yeah. Airport. This is like an airport scene. I'm just like what? no. Okay. Well, I thought I thought no that. cops show up at all. The weapons are one thing, but the fucking sunglasses. Jesus Christ, yeah. with the sunglasses, with yeah, the, it's like the fucking Coachella. You know, and there's a little bit of foreshadowing here. He, uh, you know, he sees Kim Cattrall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. From and where I'm standing, it smells like Miller time. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, he, he like, look, and the guy looks at her, not her, she's trouble. And it's like, okay, what's the deal here? And then apparently. Wait, wait, uh, wait, wait. Before okay. then, though. Yep. Sentence that makes sense, like, in a party setting that doesn't make sense in an airport. <laughs> 
who is she? Like, how the <laughs> fuck do I know? We're sending a baggage claim. Yeah, yeah. but he knew her. He knew her. But he knew her. Yeah. Oh, who is she? Yeah. That's... San Francisco is a very small town. Yeah, I don't know if you know that. Yeah, there's yeah. not very many people at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> who is she? I didn't even catch that. Uh, I was like, what? <laughs> like, what if he was just like, oh, that's Brittany, but like at the exact moment, wouldn't make any sense. I don't remember her name in the movie because this movie was terrible. Gracie. Gracie Law. <laughs> See? Gracie Law, yeah. All right, what's going on, Wang? Why'd they steal your girl? Hey, you tell me. How come it's not safe to walk in Central Park, huh? Or give a stranger a lift anymore? Because the world's full of crazy people, Jack. Hoodlums. An American girl back at the airport seemed to know something was up. Stay away from her, Jack. She's nuts, too. She's a lawyer. She's a what? Oh, come on! What the hell? They got this sort of clubhouse thing, you know, where they all hang out. Sharpen their knives, huh? I can't ask Where you is it? Thank you, Jack. Dude, you're spot on with the John Wayne thing. Right? And I totally you didn't, didn't even think. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what the whole that thing was about. That girl at the airport seemed to know something, <laughs> Pilgrim. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so, so. It's totally on purpose. So you had no idea what the fuck I was talking about no, earlier. Uh-uh. It's, <laughs> no. It's totally. <laughs> It's totally on purpose. John Carpenter yeah. wanted it that way. Yeah, I assumed it was. Th- this movie was actually supposed to take place in the 1800s. It, cow- was is it was supposed to be a western. It was supposed to be a western, but they're like, well, let's make it San That's- Francisco and Chinese people. That's what right. my whole joke was about. Yeah. It was supposed to be uh, a western, and then they, I guess the execs scrapped it right. and said, no, we want it to be modern times, and so they switched it to modern times, and it just was like... <laughs> yeah. Why um, would he say... Don't talk to her. She's a lawyer. Like, right now is when you need a lawyer. The girl you just flew in from China is fucking missing. Her family's not going to hear from her. You need a lawyer immediately. Yes. Kim Cattrall points out the fact that these punks are coming in. You know, these punks. Watch out for these punks. What are the odds that the guy in the white glasses can do anything, let alone karate chop and drive cars and stuff? Very true. I love that. that bottle in Throughout the entire movie, there's such great exposition, right? She has to explain she everything. She was, I have that yeah, note. Yeah. She was the exposition person. She's the one yeah. that says, oh, the gang so-and-so, they're the, <laughs> yeah. the meanest bunch of gangs in the land. Right. And, like, it was always her doing that. Yeah. It was, But it was, it was kitschy. It was fun. Yeah. I yeah. enjoyed the way they delivered it. Yeah. It was very um, old-time stagey, yeah. where I usually, I fucking hate that, but the, I don't know, it just kind of works for me in this well, one. Well, the, the camp of this movie is intentional. It's, yeah, it's super campy. It's intentional, right? And if he wasn't doing John Wayne, I wouldn't like it as much either. I thought him doing John Wayne, it just worked too. I, it's, I mean, it, it's a terrible movie that I just enjoy and, and love. Right. Well, I think that you'd, like if I were seeing it again and knowing this whole John Wayne thing or whatever, I just wasn't privy to that. Right. Uh, it's pretty hard to watch um you know i mean I, it, it, there's some good karate scenes in there and <laughs> you know i mean i always wanted to own a semi truck you know yeah, i mean and like, as always with these 80s movies like who knew young kurt russell was kind of hot minus yeah the oh i knew that was coming yeah minus the <laughs> I mullet mean, couldn't you get past me? the haircut yeah i get that i mean it was super popular back then though. yeah really really popular but yeah i always wanted to have a semi truck i always just thought you know you'd have you like your dream car hot wheel this is my corvette which will used to have uh, and then here's Super douchey. My, this is my Jeep, which Will has now. That's pretty douchey too. And then I had a fucking eighteen wheeler. You know what? What are you gonna do with that? I used to have hookers. Wheeler. Drive it around. Yeah, and now I know where to go for hookers. So we had an Arliss in the parade kind of situation here. The Tara girl. Yeah. That that the Gracie Law was picking up from the airport. Yeah. Seemed like was gonna be something, and then nope, never see her again. Just no, never see no. her again. She shows up at the house. It's like, oh, that's so-and-so that I was picking up and then we just nothing it was weird it, but sort of too I feel like the opening scene didn't even make any fucking sense like with the guy <laughs> questioning the other guy about stuff and it's like that was inserted after the movie was done it and, felt that way and the and the, the executive producers made them put it in because they wanted to make Jack Burton seem like a more of a heroic figure yeah because they missed the complete point of what John Carpenter is trying to do here which is Kurt Russell's character is a buffoon. Right. The the hero is Wang. Yeah. Right. That right. makes sense. Yeah. 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 So they yeah, that cuz that when they usually have that kind of a scene, it's a sprinkled throughout. Right. And then at the end there's some sort of yeah. wrap up with that. That's what I was waiting for. Was the wrap up. I was waiting okay, now okay, so he's saying goodbye to this guy. This guy's like, "Okay, my work here is done." 
why is he all of a sudden in a room with this guy while Jack drives off into the whatever right. it is, you know? But so, you know, to me, like, that's almost like a setup for a sequel kind of situation. So, which we did not need. This movie, <laughs> all the shit that the studio did with this movie, they didn't promote it right. They interfered with it from start to end. Yeah. Caused John Carpenter to self fund his own movies with his own company. Oh, wow. So the ones that the, he made after this, uh, They Live and uh, Prince of Darkness, he made it on his own with his own company. Yeah. Because he like ditched the studio. Yeah. yeah. Fuck the man. Yeah, fuck yeah. Even though this movie's great. <laughs> well, um, so, you know, here we end up in a situation where um, you were in an alley for some reason, fucking driving through San Francisco, these cobblestone streets. In a semi truck. Uh, there's no way those turns can be made. By the way, <laughs> there is no I have way. fucking. I've driven a van and trailer through these streets before, <laughs> and this there's no fucking way this is happening. Um, and they're in the alley, and then the guy uh, who I talked about earlier that's in like fucking everything show, uh, shows up, and you're like, oh shit, you know, it's gonna be a fucking fight. Like they're gonna, it's they're, we're gonna see some goddamn karate, you know. Right. And 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 then and so as it, people are approaching each other, it's gonna have, and then everybody pulls out machine guns <laughs> and just starts fucking killing everybody, right? And it's just like, I mean, that people are falling down dead or whatever. But another gang comes around the corner, and all of a sudden, guys, put your guns up. It's fucking karate time. <laughs> and then and so like, wait a minute. There's some kind of code. Now we've got to do karate. Like, right. put the guns like, away. Where did the machine guns go? Where did they go? They just fucking disappeared. They just disappeared. I looked on the ground. They no, did not nothing. throw them down. Thank and you. Part, I was part of that stuff. code is don't shoot the semi truck. Right? Oh, exactly. <laughs> the tires weren't flat. <laughs> no bullets. Like, after that whole well, the Asian no. community is really respectful of people's that's, property. That's true. Yeah. That's so true. everybody uh, is kung fu fighting. Right. You know, and they're just fighting or whatever. And then a guy with a huge fishing hat floats down and all of a sudden, oh, fuck, there's three guys with hats. That is amazing. And and they all know how to do that thing, as I said earlier, where they can do the deal without having the ball from Spencer's where you touch the edge of it and it fucking shoots the little lightning bolts into the corner. They can all do it in their hands. And then they, they all have a tremendous warm up to their karate. You know, and and uh, and and everybody's uh, got their weapon, and they're like, "Oi, got to cut, cut, play!" Like, and, and before they even punch anybody. And to me, like, I just did that, and I'm winded. I feel like it's at least a, it feels like a real city gang fight because the lady outside, like, plucking a chicken's like, I didn't see nothing. Just yeah. goes inside. I don't know what you're talking about. Get off my front. <laughs> All I could think about during this fight scene was Anchorman. It's all right. I could think about yes. was just like they probably got it from this. Well, j and that could be right, yeah. but just all of these just insane weapons just appear out of nowhere, you know, and like it's in it's like like elect like like electricity and lightning. Uh, uh, brick, where did you get a trident? <laughs> You know, it's fucking. I, that's it, all I can think about. Is it racist for me to assume that this goes on all the time in Chinatown? <laughs> I've been to Chinatown, New York, a bunch. I've never seen any of this, so I don't know. Been, Maybe I've it's never a, been to Chinatown. It could be a West Coast thing. I mean, yeah. again, Will is the fucking authority on. Yeah, this I used to live in San Francisco, actually. Someone took me down to Chinatown. You went down <laughs> to Chinatown. <laughs> Roadhouse. Jackie Chan apparently was in this fight scene. I fucking I saw, saw him. him. Me too. I saw him. He was Swear supposed to God. To, he I was thought I was imagining things. No. I thought I was being a racist. I Everyone looks the same thing. I 100% saw him. He was supposed to play Wang. Yeah. He was actually. But the fucking studio was like his accent. It's not going to work. Oh my God. I totally saw him. And in fact. His accent's not going to work. We'll just get this guy to say nothing or double a couple times. And that'll <laughs> but do you not listen that. to his accent? He's fucking American accent all the way. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Uh, there were several of the of of the guys that were just in the fight scenes, and then even later on in like his little gang or whatever that I reckon, yeah, like the guys with the thumb and the pointer thing, <laughs> where you recognize those dudes from so many other yeah, movies. Yeah, definitely. Um, I swear like, to God, I thought I saw Jackie Chan too, and I like I fucking the, didn't look at the up. guy with the butcher knife that comes out first. That guy's in fucking everything. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the, what, exactly what I wrote down. Yeah. That guy's in everything. That guy isn't. He is the. Martial artist stuntman. He was in yeah. Die Hard. Yeah, he's in everything. Yeah. Remember, he was the guy that got the candy bar from the thing. Jarrett's opening a bill. What does that mean? 
huh? China is here. I don't even know what the hell that means. All I know is this low pan character comes out of thin air in the middle of a goddamn alley while his buddies are flying around on wires cutting everybody to shreds, and he just stands there waiting for me to drive my truck straight through him with light coming out of his mouth? Jack, please. Hello. Oh, yeah, this, yeah. When okay. did this Today, happen? Okay, it didn't, on. Uncle Chu. Not like he says. Yeah, it did, Uncle Chu. Two hours ago. Tall guy, weird clothes. First you see him, then you don't. Yeah, is this just a switchboard? I mean, is there an agent Pong there on the street? appeared on the street? Wanchi, why didn't you tell me? I didn't want to alarm you, Uncle. The John Wayne thing is blowing my fucking mind now. <laughs> because now, it, 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 I honestly feel... Let's just fucking pause it. I'll go watch this again. No, I won't. <laughs> but it, it does like, change everything about like the way that I watch Kurt Russell's delivery. And you guys just let me describe his <laughs> acting earlier. It didn't fucking say anything. I think it's true. Every time he has a line, I fucking laugh at it. It's so funny it's so to me. Funny. It's so f Now it's funny. It's, it's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, this is about the point right here in the movie, though. Not about. This is when it happens. Casey just got, looks at me. I go, um, I go, you know, she's on her phone. And, and that doesn't necessarily, I mean, she could be looking at something about the movie or whatever, but I just go, are they losing you here? And she goes, she just goes, I have no fucking idea what's going on. <laughs> and this, this scene does nothing to help set that up. All of a sudden the lawyer lady walks in and Kurt Russell's character isn't like surprised to see or anything. All, he, they just act like they know each other all of a sudden. <laughs> they saw each other for two and a half seconds. And then, and, and all of, and it was, what the fuck is going, there is no character building at yeah. all. It's just all of a sudden. That's what I kept thinking. There was no character development in the beginning. She I had said, still... don't panic. It's only me, Gracie Law. And right. Then, and and he just, get, why would he start panicking? And they start doing this whole detective noir riff thing. It's yeah. the best. Oh it's my so God. funny. <laughs> what I thought about her character, the delivery of her lines if you think about Uma Thurman in Pulp Fiction that every time she would say something that's the character that I would think of because a, but I you mean, didn't hear John Wayne I did not hear the John that's Wayne that's crazy I just assumed that everyone no heard John Wayne it's so obvious I just thought it was just a bad edited Kurt Russell movie I really <laughs> did but I mean now it makes sense I mean I said this at the beginning of the podcast and now I feel like an asshole <laughs> Because I'm like, it just sounds like all of his things are edited in because that's what fucking John Wayne sounds like. You know? <laughs> right. So that's exactly but, right. But I mean, I don't know. How do you describe her acting then? Because um, it's not great. Like, like a campy film noir. Okay. Yeah, so like it's she's a, like she's a gumshoe trying right, to yeah, solve the shoe. crime. Right. So th that's part of the thing. She's yeah. acting like this. Yes. The camp. Yeah. yeah. So can we talk about the three storms? By the way, I've been to camp. <laughs> did you ever? Did you ever go to camp? It's, I went to Camp Lujo Kismuth, I, and you know what Kismuth stood for? Keep it safe, keep it fun. Is that fucking true? No, keep it safe, make it fun. Sorry, uh, because that would be we would be illiterate if it was keep it safe. <laughs> it was keep it uh, keep it safe, make it fun, and uh, a lot of things went down at this camp. I, uh, if you got mail, uh, you had to walk around the uh, flagpole for How each. How long were you there that the, you got mail? One week. But my our parents would like pre uh, pre send it. If you got a package, you had to um, walk around the mailbox. So my mom and grandma thought it was hilarious to send me different parts of things in different fucking. So I'd get like a letter that was like, "Dear Jarrett, that's it." <laughs> <laughs> then I'd open up the other one, "Love, Mom." And then I'd open the other one. We really love you. And I'm like, you should have numbered these fucking letters at least because I'm going to be walking around this flagpole for days, you know. <laughs> and you couldn't put your elbows on the table during lunch or somebody would sing, get your elbows off the table, Jarrett Reddick. Get your elbows off the table, Jarrett Reddick. We have seen you once or twice and it wasn't very nice. Get your elbows off the table, Jarrett Reddick. Wait for it. Round the flagpole, you must go, you must go, you must go. Round the <laughs> flagpole, the you fuck? must go. You were naughty. Fucking How old were you? He was yeah. 25. <laughs> <laughs> As a kid, I was like, you know, but my brother went till like eighth grade at this thing. My mom never sent me to like summer camp ever. Yeah. I didn't go to stay away camp. No. Yeah. I mean, in fifth grade at our school, they sent you away to camp for a week and you like had to go. It was like mandatory because they fucking hate children. I don't know. And I went there, 
And about halfway through the trip, the trip, which I like, mind you, like my whole trip was like my mom pretty much like packed a couple things of clothes, and I was like the kid with all the snacks and candy in my bag. Like that was my whole you were the dealer. purpose, yeah, yeah. dealer. And I just I go up to my like little camp counselor, who now like hindsight probably was like eighteen, and I was like, I think I got bit by a spider, and they were like, Well, you'll be okay, like you know, it's fine, it was you know. On my who name? And, no, it was on my stomach, and oh. they were like, Ah, well, you know, that happens, you know. Just let us know if anything happens when I come back. And I'm like, I think it's really bad. And they're like, will you show me? And like, my whole stomach was like blue and purple. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> it was a scorpion. Oh, oh <laughs> snap. That's on the top 25 most dangerous animals. The ones that we they have here. They didn't even do anything are, about are, it. I mean, they suck, but like, they drop down from the ceiling and shit. It sucks. They, they end up in your bed. That's Ugh. that's a big thing. Well, that was it. They were like in our cabins yeah. on the walls. And they would they drop down. Yeah, yeah. and I got bit. And they didn't it's do like anything. they're, I had it's to like stay they're the up there, the just walking around, and it's just like I just can't fucking do this anymore. Just, why isn't that like? <laughs> why is that even allowed? No, you can't sleep out in the wild because you might get. We were in a cabin. By, it doesn't. That's even worse because they're gonna be in the cabin too. No, you, I remember that. All the girls go running out because we saw one, and I'm literally sitting on my bed, and I go, "Where do y'all think they came from?" And they all go, Wah! and run back inside. <laughs> like, <I'm just> like, <laughs> all right, can we now talk about the three storms? Absolutely. Great. Okay, one was lightning. Yep. What like, were the other two? Rain and thunder. Oh, rain? Mm-hmm. Oh, so they were a fucking the, thunderstorm. The, they're the three storms. They're one storm. Now, this is... <laughs> <laughs> they are one storm. The storm we had two so, days ago, minus uh, the hail. They're actually a less terrifying the, storm. Thunder was the big guy, and all of this happened at your sleepover camp. Yeah. <laughs> thunder was the big guy. Lightning was the dude shooting lightning, right? Obviously, and rain was the guy with the long hair that like made it rain. Spun forks <laughs> yeah, in his I did. hand. I'm his, almost his, positive <laughs> that the one guy was on Enter the Dragon. And I couldn't figure out which guy it was, but like one of the guys, the big Bolo. muscly one. You're talking about Bolo? The big muscly one. I thought that's like the main... like. No, like, you're thinking of Bolo. That's a different guy. Bolo. The Got muscly it. guy, actually, he was uh, he was a self... He was like a martial arts trainer for like the Hong Kong police force Holy or something. Holy shit. He was like badass. By the way, what does Bolo mean in case we need it? It's a tie. No. Oh. Uh, close. Okay. Uh, that you're still thinking John Wayne. Okay. Uh, no. Be on the lookout. <laughs> So uh, there's if, a bolo for someone. No, it's like if you're if you're. Uh, so I tell the kids all the time, bolo a Sonic. You know? <laughs> yeah, the storms are interesting. Like thunder, he was he was a big, tough, strong guy. Uh-huh. Lightning, he obviously could fucking chuck lightning everywhere, which yeah. is awesome. It's like lightning. Rain was lame. Like, what does he even do? He, he just spun forks in his hands. Rain. No, that was lightning. Oh, that was lightning. Yeah. Oh no, uh, rain had the forks that extended. Okay. And lightning oh, had the spinning. That, oh, that guy's right, but he had lightning too. All right, here's the thing. Let me break this no, down for you guys. Long hair guy was right. First of all, I haven't been but listening he did to lightning. Any of this. No, he didn't. I the, saw him. The first guy was terrifying. The second guy was terrifying. The third guy just held his hands out, and it then just and it looked like he was holding like a. Uh, like a fork right. that you buy a person that doesn't know how to eat spaghetti. Well, he is Asian. It's like one of those little dinosaur hands. Exactly. Just <laughs> It's like something you get at fucking Disney on Ice. We have two of those <laughs> in the other room, for sure. And it, But ours light up. This one didn't even light up. <laughs> fucking special effects were stupid. Look, you know me. I'm always poking my nose where it doesn't belong. And as a result, I admit it, this mix-up is my fault, sort of. But I've got it on good advice that those punks that jumped me and ripped off his truck, the girl they kidnapped, they took over to the White Tigers for a quick sale. Who was she? My fiance. The White Tigers? Oh, God, I'm sorry. If we get over there tonight fast, maybe we can buy her back. A search warrant's too complicated. Violence out of the question. Hold it. Hold it. Slow down. I'm feeling a little like an outsider here. You are. <laughs> Jack, listen. I need more of your help. I can't pay you today, okay? Oh, shit. How can I? I need all my cash from Mao Yin. And it's going to cost. She's got green eyes. Oh, no, seriously? Well, there's an extra to these people. It's like leather bucket seats. It's double the price. What people? Look, this little pan I ran over through. So here's the deal. At, at this point, I can't even imagine the fact that I haven't picked up on the fucking John Wayne thing. Like, this line is is so deliberate. It's like he's now just doing an impression of it. Yes. A God, I feel impression. like such a dick. And, you know, part of why I think... The show is interesting is when I go into these movies, I don't do any sort of research. I just watch it and right. do that. But 
You know, throw me a bone here every once in a I while. I just thought you would totally how go, the fuck he's would I doing know? John Wayne. I don't know how I would know that. And anybody that's that watched this to hear this episode, I'd love to know if you Like, just, I didn't do any research. I just, I hadn't watched this in 20-something years, and I heard it, and I go, oh, yeah, that's right, he's doing I literally watch this movie probably five times every year for the last however long it came out. <laughs> oh, well, if I can say anything, regardless of what, impersonation he's doing this movie was still terrible <laughs> it, yeah so it's they, not supposed to be good like, if you haven't but seen it but it was like really bad and maybe I just wasted all of my liking a terrible movie on the burbs <laughs> yeah <laughs> I would I would watch this 40 times before I, would I watch, watch the, the burbs, burbs again the rest of my life and never see this movie oh again. my god <laughs> yeah you know the burbs was a tough one and uh, I liked it fine. there was at least it's so funny f- things on this one it's so funny though how many people are were stoked about know, the burbs right? like this is like, like one of my, oh, favorite, it's my movies. favorite movie. I can't wait. And it's I one, one, at the one more reason why you have to come in ready to fucking be upbeat and awesome yeah. no matter what. There were yeah. 30 minutes left in this movie, and I was laying there and I looked at Jared and I just go, Is this a fucking comedy? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I had exactly. no idea. <laughs> it is a comedy. I had no clue. It is yeah. actually classified as a comedy. Yeah. So sure. the, one of the editing things that I just thought was funny, just because I do videos and shit all the time. So I direct videos, edit videos or whatever, and the I <laughs> there's a point here where he just goes, Help me, Jack, I've got a great idea. And they do this fucking circular cross oh, yeah. dissolve thing. <laughs> yeah. And I fucking started laughing like out loud and there's no way Casey knew what I was laughing at. Like I'm just like funniest fucking edit ever. Like just <laughs> cause they had probably just figured that out. Like, right. you know what we can do. We can fucking take this and just make a circle and it'll fade in to this next scene where they're just him going into like the, the, brothel, uh, the yeah. brothel and he's and actually this character I liked like I thought, <laughs> oh, OK, he's being hilarious and wearing nerd glasses. So the funny thing about this is that what he's wearing is the exact same thing that he wore in used cars. What? What a flipping great movie used cars was. I oh, that one. my God. A fucking masterpiece. So then they're in the. Uh, so I put y- y'all are saying brothel. I put whorehouse. <laughs> I don't know what's in. <laughs> apparently we're using different terms. Oh, when they're when they're camp. Asians, it's a brothel. Oh, okay. Now I got it. Yeah. I, or Orientals or whatever. It's, it's you saw too many Dolly Barton movies. <laughs> Did you guys rewind it to see if you could see boobs? No, no. me because you don't. I didn't because my wife is there. Was I there during a whorehouse scene? I have yeah, no there idea. was a. <laughs> Texas has a whorehouse in it. But then, <laughs> so here's what happens at this at this point: uh, the they combined the Exorcist, uh, weird science, uh-huh. uh, and and they make the the bed starts to fly up or whatever, and the, and then it looks like okay she's gonna float into space or like fly out the roof. Nope, the guy with the fishing hat comes in oh, again yeah. and grabs her in the most uncomfortable carrying a person way <laughs> I have ever seen in my <laughs> life. Ever, he's way too small to pick her up like that. It's like, and then, and then, it's the city's green. She's a big girl. All you can hear is like Ghostbusters. Oh. What do you want? You know, I mean, it's <laughs> it's bad at this point. And I don't mean bad movie making. I mean like the city is fucking being taken over by three fishing hat guys. Where are the cops? Well, it's like with the first karate scene, San Francisco, Chinatown is like one of the more populated places in San Francisco. <laughs> and when they start karate fighting, yeah, there's, it's a no-go zone. there's no people. Because yeah. cops got better things than, than to die. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. They explained the hell no, out of it. What, are you, what right. are you complaining yeah. about? Oh, man, I love this part. Here we go. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for Rich's 11-point scale. Who's he going to judge this time? And will we all agree? Nobody knows. <laughs> See if we can get there with him. Here we go. All right, Rich, take it away. All right, I'm doing Kim Cattrall. You wish. For the 11-point rating yeah. scale. Hair, seven. Mm-hmm. Eyes, nine. Fake eyes or real eyes? Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's a, it's it's not about the color, but it's the composition. I have a question about this. When we do the scale, is it this person in this movie? Yeah, I'm doing it in this movie. I I did look at mannequin a little bit, and I you know, mm-hmm. and I definitely have some burned impressions in my eyes from watching Sex in the City and her right. naked like every every episode. Right. So I couldn't get that out of my head either. Um. So eyes nine, nose nine, smile seven, face eight overall. Uh, arms eight, uh, boobs five, but I, 
I I only I've only seen her boobs older. I'm gonna, Is that I'm, right? So, so for Jarrett, like a twelve. Right. <laughs> like a fifteen. <laughs> uh, waist six, ass a five. I couldn't. There wasn't anything of her ass, and then what I kind of could see. Wait, what? Well, why would you judge her boobs based on another show, <laughs> but not her ass? They show her ass in that show all the yeah, time too. Yeah, her ass is pretty good. Uh, Especially for her age in that so show. But I can't, I don't know, I don't know. So I just did the middle of the road. Mm-hmm. Five. Legs, seven. And then I gave her overall, I think she's a solid seven. I mean, overall. And which I always forget. gives it a, seven dot, a 7.1 for a total. And then the Chinese girl is an easy 8.2. Okay, all right. Now, um, <laughs> we should call this the Richter scale. <laughs> Ooh. That's pretty good. What do you think, right? Yeah, That's I like pretty it. Good. I'll do one for Kim Control. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so... Um, By the way, this is off the cuff. Yeah, off the cuff. Off the cuff here. So, I think that her father thinks that she is the most beautiful angel in the entire world. Ten. Okay. Her father's dead. I don't know that. Well, basically, <laughs> that means that her father is an angel. Right. Eleven. Yeah, I was back. <laughs> <laughs> He'll always, she'll always be daddy's little girl, so 10. And so now we have to grab your fiance Wait really a fast. minute, wait a minute. I'm a reasonable guy, but I've just experienced some very unreasonable things. It depends on how you look at the it. The hell it does. So somebody, I don't care who, tell me what is going on. The truth? I can take it. We don't know. I'm going now, alone if I have to. What? Where? It's pouring out. Low pants, the Wing Kong Exchange. The Wing Kong Exchange? The most dangerous cutthroat den of madmen in Chinatown. You can't just waltz in and out of there like... Like the wind. Yes, I can, Miss Law. My best. mind and my spirits are as one. As two. I said I was coming. I go with you, but... I know. There's a problem with your face. <laughs> okay. You people sit tight, hold the fort, and keep the home fires burning. And if we're not back by dawn... Call the president. All right, so <laughs> that's that so gotta be what, it's the, the best. best line in yeah. the movie. That it's, whole little <laughs> I know, but here's the thing: is I just again, I, you better keep the home fires burning. <laughs> if we're not back by dawn, call, call the, the president. president. Which no. is totally escape from New York. Right? I'm a reasonable guy, but I've experienced some unreasonable things. This is fucking brilliant. Uh, totally. I, I again, I think we're watching from an aspect that we just didn't understand because I thought even no, the, I understand, and I still <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so a you know the guy goes, I'm going by myself, whatever. He's like, I told you I'd go. No, you didn't. We didn't ever fucking hear you do that. <laughs> right. And then you're not going because there's a problem with your face. What? Because yeah, she had said he, something about her face earlier, and he's like, I know there's a problem with your face. Yeah, She's like, Where are you gonna go? It's pouring outside. That's the fucking problem? Is that no, a draining? No, I think she had said something like they'd recognize her or something like that. Right. <laughs> they know she is. They they know, yeah, they know my no, no, face. No, no, not her. Like, the guy is like saying he's going to go get his fiance and she's like, where are you going to go? It's pouring outside. And I'm like, there's also fucking fiery lightning demons. We're not going to talk about that. The rain's the <laughs> right. issue. Right. So this rain's is where they. scary hat guy. This is where they walk through the lobby or whatever and apparently they're the phone company. It, I, it actually made me laugh because. Remember when the phone company would come to your house and they'd have the little, little phone phones. that they carried right, or whatever? Yeah. Like, and so he just grabs some fucking <laughs> random phone, random normal phone, and just carries it through there. Like, here we go. And they walk through a few rooms, and they then they walk into this one room, and I'm like, uh oh, ceramics, you know? <laughs> and then nothing happens. Yeah, I when they walk in. And they, you know, beep bopping around. They go, oh, I, th- I think they bought it. I immediately go, oh, they didn't buy it. They're about to hit some obstacle. And then they didn't no, hit they the just obstacle. Kept going. They, just, they were fine. They got through. And then they saw the camera. They're like, remember last time? It was this wiring thing. <laughs> So, so they're, those, you they're think the that, worst you security think that camera who was like recording audio? Something. I mean, it would have to have been. I don't know. In I mean, 86? Yeah, probably exactly. not. Yeah. Like, oh, don't worry. They're talking about cables. We're in an elevator <laughs> and we're underwater, right? And like, uh, now keep in mind the elevator is stopped and it's still filling up with water. Right. And when they get out, everything else has been underwater for a while. It was yeah, right. just like, why is there a pirate ship or whatever there? Which is like, <laughs> With skeletons tied yeah. to the All plank. All the dead people. What the fuck was that? <laughs> it's, it's campy, scary stuff. Could what? not know. It's a bad place, Casey. It's a bad place. Could not I will that. say this, like all the like underwater, like 
don't know how long I'm going to swim things. Like, I know for a fact that if I'm ever underwater and I don't know how long I have to swim, you die. I'm breathing it all in. Yeah. Fuck it. Like, I'm out. You know, yeah. they totally I'm missed insane. an opportunity. In this I'm not scene. going through the fucking tunnel underwater. No. no. They missed the opportunity for showing us some water karate. Oh. Well, yeah. And you know, the thing is, is Everybody I was, was dead. Well, I was only 14 at the time, and they had, they did approach me <laughs> uh, to come in and do some consulting. Um, I turned it down, and really the reason why was because I was consulting on another movie uh, with Michael J. Fox in it that didn't actually get uh, picked up. Um, what was it called? Uh, it the w- Water Karate Kid. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually not supposed to talk about that. I've shared it with my wife, and now the fucking world knows about it. Uh, the Water Karate Kid, for some reason, never got made. And, uh, you know, I was upset water about it. Karate kid. But... You know, again, Michael J. Fox was going to play um, Ralph Macchio. Uh, so they get out of this, and then we just see a plethora of Buddhas, you know? Yeah. There was just so many Buddhas. It's a yeah. shrine. You, Did I ever? What? This is not relevant to the movie. Yeah. Did I ever tell you about the guy <laughs> that I was walking? So I had my hair like in a little top knot on top of my head. Uh-huh. Which looks ridiculous, but it's just kind of... I was going to say, you were just harping on that, but okay. No, on men. Okay. But, like, girls can do little top knots. It's a ridiculous trend, but it's a trend nonetheless. Right. right. And I was walking through, and I was, like, going to buy some tilapia from the fish guy, and he just goes, oh, you look like Buddha. <laughs> and, I, and I just, like, I just looked at him, because, like, I'm not a thin lady. And I just stared at him, and he just went... Oh, I mean, your hair is, and you have, and I just kept looking at him. I knew exactly what he meant. <laughs> and he just fucking shut <laughs> down. Did wow. I ever tell you that story? It was at the Kroger by Everett's old school. No, you did not tell yeah. me that story. Oh, you look like Buddha. And I'm just like, oh, yeah? Like, you know, yeah. There's a, oh, I mean, I just, uh-huh. Yeah, there's a, okay. There, there's a thin Buddha. There's yeah, a characteristic about Buddhas that everyone imagines when someone says Buddha and the top knot's not one of those things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I always think he's bald. Buddha? I always think he is too. Yeah, and he's got like a chubby belly. I used to have a Buddha candle. Yeah. But you know, you know the little skinny Buddha that has like the little knot, like top knot? I mm-hmm. do not know he that. He pointed at my hair. I knew what he said. Yeah, well that fucking guy doesn't know shit. Yeah, Maybe the fish guy called me guy. fat now that I think about it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Let's go back there. He was just trying to sell fish. But <laughs> you know, um, so the guy comes out in the wheelchair and he looks like Freddy Krueger. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like Freddy Krueger makeup. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's see-through, which is I thought was kind of nice. Yeah, he was it's see-through. It's nice to be some transparent sometimes. <laughs> I, li- I like it when... <laughs> you I can like get Jack, anything uh, out of that guy. Jack just keeps calling him Dave. <laughs> Dave. The best. Oh, yeah, he keeps calling him Dave. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is. And then the best line ever. This really pisses me off to no end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, maybe I should watch this again because I bet it's fucking funny. It and you funny. should watch it Not on the bus. Without you. Next week. The God of the East. Who? Him? This guy? No, not me, Mr. Burton. My demon. The God I must appease in order to regain my heart, my blood. A girl with green eyes to satisfy Ting die. A girl brave enough to embrace the naked blade. And when I find her, I will marry her. Never! Then Ching Dai will be happy and my curse will be lifted. You can go off and rule the universe from beyond the grave. Indeed! Or check into a psycho ward, whichever comes first, huh? <laughs> Jack, will you... Jack! What? I'm supposed to buy this shit? 3,000 years and he can't find one broad to fit the bill? Come on, Dave. You must be doing something <laughs> seriously wrong. Is the rule a girl with green eyes? Because he he literally says a girl with green eyes. So is that the rule or is it a Chinese girl with green eyes? Because if it's just a girl with green eyes, he's in the wrong town. He should be in Southie because there's shit tons of those in Boston. That's correct. So now he gets this. So my point is there's shit tons of people with green eyes. Yeah, he didn't have to wait this long. No. Well, he, you know, he's been he alive a, for hundreds of years. He clearly has a type. Maybe he's super, <laughs> maybe he's super xenophobic. Who knows? Oh, that's true. So Good this point. movie has an 83% liked score. Yeah, because yeah. it's fucking radical. Uh, out of 135,000 people. So they they actually, though, rate this one as a Kung Fu B movie. So at, at, yeah. as, as I... I wouldn't say it's a Kung Fu movie. Uh, I'm just telling you what no, fucking 153,000 fucking people say. I'm just saying me personally wouldn't. I started thinking about it like that, though. Like, I started thinking, okay, well, maybe it's about, like, the fight scenes back then, you know, and... Because there is. There's a lot of fight scenes. And, like, none of the fight scenes really are funny. 
For me, it's the campy lines. I just love the little banter. Well, there's even campy fight scenes, like when he's fighting Rain with the swords, and they're like jumping back and forth. <laughs> yeah, and, that was. Hilarious. And when he fights Thunder, and they're like throwing yeah, none shit. None of that's supposed to be serious either. Yeah, yeah. all the furniture's flying, and they keep going back and forth yeah, like that a was, comedy. That's bit. fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. Where's Marvel? I don't know. Like you pick up on this was like a gag. Like yeah. it was like a a skit almost. This I thought was funny, and I I can pick up on that. I'll, I'll back up just a smidge. I fucking love the deal where they all get guns, and he and he walks through, and he's just like, "I'll trade you." And he takes the <laughs> he gives him the fucking revolver, takes the Uzi, and then the other guy's trading with the other guy or whatever. Right. So fucking funny. And then uh, and then uh, again, this is the point where the, Wang is that his name? Mm-hmm. Wang. This is where Wang learns karate. All yeah. of a sudden, he just knows karate. All of a sudden. And in this scene, uh, Kim Cattrall does literally the worst dive into water <laughs> yeah, she in belly history. Flops, yeah. I mean, they all like, were pretty bad except for the the other Chinese. Guys. No, I, they. I'm going to be honest. Like they, they weren't. None of none of them were uh, like bad. Bad. Hers was real <laughs> bad, and maybe it was on purpose. I think it was on purpose. I fucking thought it was funny. But she's uh, from England. They don't do a lot of swimming there, do they? No, it's an island, dude. Oh. Lots yeah. of swimming on that island? They fucking yeah. swim, dude. They, they all try cold. to swim to, to France. Oh. What? <laughs> they try, what? They try to swim the channel. That is a yeah. thing. Yeah, we a we thing. like to surf the channels in the U.S. Yeah, fuck yeah, man. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We just watch Forensic Files and My, Family Feud. <laughs> Jared just drops the mic and leaves the room. <laughs> I just full on fucking just let that one settle in. <laughs> fucking arms up in the air. Fuck it. Um... So yeah, I mean, I, but that I guess the thing, the, the the reason why the joke isn't really, I, I get, I'm like, how are they already in love? They've literally had two conversations. She's all worried about. She's freaking out that he's dead. You know, I mean, she was just <sighs> worried about the hot guy. I guess that's it. Yeah. So they, they're I, rubbing their bodies up in the tunnel. <laughs> so I, this is the funniest, the funniest scene. To me, in the movie, is this right here? You know, he's rescuing everybody or whatever, and he's walking into the thing, and he just goes, "Okay, guys, you guys know, follow the leader. Okay, follow the leader. Here we go. One, two, three, and he opens the door, and they're all just standing there, <laughs> and he just goes, "We may be trapped." <laughs> <laughs> like that was fucking. And then he funny. goes, "Well, they only saw me. Yeah, they <laughs> only saw me." <laughs> That's Even right. though they hear me talking to all of you guys. <laughs> right. And we're back into the ceramics room, and this is where the fucking ceramics get broken. Yeah. That kid is back on the escalator again. Leave it alone. What? Huh? What does it mean? <laughs> Two girls with green eyes? <laughs> After all these years. You bastards, unchain me. You're not going to get away with this. Where's Lopan? Hello, this one has fire as well. Hey, listen, I've had enough here with you maniacs. I want to see that disgusting flesh peddler David Lopin in person. Cowards afraid to see an unarmed girl one on one, huh? Where is he? I definitely knew that we were in some sort of a fucking comic booky type movie at yeah. this point. It, this isn't based on a comic book, right? No, I just mean like it's just silly. No, I know, but I actually looked that up. Is that the... I, okay, so I'll just fucking go out there. I, I don't necessarily use the word campy a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, So is that what we're talking about? Total like, camp. Yeah, kind yeah of, sure. It's meant to be. Okay. Yeah. It's meant to be campy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then she fucking killed it in this movie. Like fucking <laughs> Academy Award should have been unbelievable. So I did some research. Two percent of the population have green eyes, mostly in Iceland because of the Rayleigh scattering of light there. Look mm-hmm. that up; it's R A Y L E I G H. Hold on, let me scattering. get that. Let me get that. Your wife's a unicorn, Will. 
I know. Uh, basically, it just causes some chemical reaction in, in your eyes and it turns them green, I guess. Um, but still, 2% of the population is still 140 million people. Mm. How is it hard to find green eyes? What's the most common color of eyes? Brown. Probably brown, right? Is definitely it, uh, brown. Yeah, definitely brown. Yeah. Because of the Asian culture. Uh, I just thought we were all full of shit. What color mm. your eyes, Will? Blue. My eyes are blue and green. Yeah. So Casey like- says that my eyes aren't really brown. No, there's a bunch of colors in there. Yeah, yeah. you got... I, I remember sitting across from you at a rest at the restaurant. See, and you were just um, looking into my eyes. Mashed. We're sitting across, and I remember her saying something about your eyes. The the podcast before, and Rich, and then got, we're sitting Rich across got lost in your eyes. And I really did. You like <laughs> have these amazing, and and like I can't see that now. I'm looking at your eyes and just like right. brown from far away. But like there's like a light, and it has like some yeah. green and some red and some and gold. It, there's like all kinds of colors. In I there. took like it a sideway really cool. eyeball shot in a light, and I'm like, see all those colors? And he's like, no, I can't tell I if Rich is of, being serious or not. No, like, I'm being dead like, serious. And then I really took a picture of Jack. Thanks, man. And I, I took a picture of his eyes because Jack. Thank me, that's gay. Jack has the same <laughs> eyes as Jarrett, the exact same ones. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, look at Jack's eyes, like look at him. And I'm like, see? And he's like, no, like he has no concept. That's for it. because people with brown eyes, we don't see all that bullshit. Well, I've got blue eyes, and I can recognize some pretty blue eyes. <laughs> blue eyes. My eyes are very blue. Yeah, mine are pretty. Yeah. Blue. Did you know that roughly blue. the same percentage uh, as that have green eyes is the same percentage of gay people in the United States? So that would mean Uh-oh. that forty percent of the characters on TV should have green eyes. Okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. I didn't think that was funny at all. Yeah. I didn't. I just didn't know where that I was going. I don't know a lot of green eyed people. <laughs> you know. And then whenever I meet people with green eyes, I'm like, oh, you've got like green eyes. They're like, it's hazel. And people with brown eyes are like, it's hazel. And people with blue eyes are like, it's hazel. And I'm like, what the fuck is hazel? Yeah. Clearly, you people isn't don't hazel know. just gray? It's like a bunch of no. Colors. No, it's oh. like light brown. Yeah, oh. but like it looks like green. Yeah, I thought it was brownish green, sort of. Yeah, I mean, I mean it has like a green. But people with blue eyes it, yeah. say hazel. People with gray eyes say hazel. People with brown eyes say hazel. People with green eyes. It pisses me off. Yeah. I fucking yell at my dog. I say hazel. <laughs> That's her <laughs> <Jesus> name. Christ. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. These are our friends. These are the Chang Sings. Any of them savvy English? Hey, man, who is this guy? <laughs> all right, all right. You got any guns? <laughs> well, not against low parent. Here, here's one for you. Make you feel better like Dirty Harry. I'll stick with these. You coming with us, Egg? Of course, Jack. It's my destiny. Besides, if I don't, you'll never make it out alive. I'm on board, too, then. Yeah, sure, kid. You can't keep the press out, mister. This is America. You're not going back there, Margo. You're staying here topside with Eddie and Uncle Chu. Eddie, but he's... He's got a crush on you. You mean like you've got on Gracie? Are you kidding? I just want to get my truck back. Oh, yeah, what do I know? She's not even your type. All brains. Hey, come on, let's go. Now, so the journalist (laughs) has been in a lot of shit, too. Was she not the wife Uh, on Die Hard? No, she no, looks no, just like her. her. Nah. She's been on a bunch of shit. You just terrible. totally blew me off. I go, <laughs> no. she's been on a lot of stuff. Instead no. of you just going, yeah, totally. You just go, no, no, nah, I don't really. I, don't. I, I looked her up. She well, she hasn't been in very She much. hasn't done a lot of shit. <laughs> I just love that one guy. He was like, the fuck's up, dude? I'm from Long Beach. Yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah. Fuck's up with this guy. Yeah. Any of these guys speak English? Yeah. What's up with this guy? <laughs> And these are the same dudes that were just in, like, the whole fucking karate fight with Chinese honor and shit. (laughs) There he is. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? Fantastic. David Dooley, here's the thing. We watched this movie called Big Trouble in Little China this week. Kurt Russell is known as a uh, child actor, a sex symbol, an actor that went on to be in many, many movies. Can you name the movie... That he played a single dad in, co-starring his wife, or actually a uh, common law wife, Goldie Hawn. Uh, Goldie Hawn's Overboard? Yes. Overboard is correct. That is absolutely right. Um, Love that movie. That was actually a super hard question. It they was. They only get worse from here well, on. Well, you, know you know I have my uh, <laughs> my helper that knows movies like the back <laughs> of my right. hand. Yes. Uh Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell were not married, but they did have children together. However, their most most widely known ch- uh, the most widely known child that they raised together is what actress that Rich does not like her boobies? <laughs> Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson is correct. That is absolutely correct. That is right. <laughs> All right, in the Body shaming. 
in the movie Big Trouble in Little China, about halfway through, his sidekick just all of a sudden knows karate. <laughs> Couldn't have got him through any of the other stuff. He just happened to learn karate. Then later on, they did something to so where everybody that did this knew karate. Did they drink something, eat something, study something, or shoot up? <laughs> They drank something. They drank the old something. Man that is correct. Out. They drank something. All of a sudden, they could jump high and shit. It was crazy. It was like uh, performance enhancing and drugs. Like, you know? What are you doing? Like you in a swimming oh, pool. Yeah. It's like me in a swimming <laughs> pool. We're all giving each other the sign right now. <laughs> Which was so funny. I mean, <laughs> I'll talk about that later. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, all right, you're doing fantastic. Um, in the movie uh, uh, Big Trouble in Little China, Kurt Russell's job is what? Truck driver. He is a truck driver. Woo-hoo. Bonus points, which I can't give you po- points for, but I, but just, for, uh, just to be Giggles. a whole lot cooler ever, the ah. most famous song about trucking that is <laughs> also played a lot at skating rinks <laughs> is called What? What? Ooh, um... Starts with a C. Convoy. Convoy is correct. I was going to say cunt, but... For another, <laughs> on, for another honorable mention, what is the main guy in the song Convoy's CB handle? Oh, gosh. I don't remember. It, it. is the rubber duck. That's right. The rubber duck. Thank That's you. right. Coming okay. in. Yeah. Mercy sakes, mercy sakes. I just... Would that be them playing that song a lot lately? Because I guess some guy redid it, but all he did was redo the singing part. So, like, all the oh. rubber duck parts are just the same. So, it's like, <laughs> what is the remake of this? It's like, I miss the lady singing because it just makes me want to skate. The question is, why are you at roller rinks right now? So uh, often. I have kids. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And sometimes we get a great big convoy rolling through the night. <laughs> and it is such a beautiful sight. Rich. Such a beautiful sight, yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, uh, here's a funny story about that song. I um, is this question eight? What is this? <laughs> I used to say, uh, yes. "Come on, join our convoy. Ain't nothing gonna get our way. We're gonna roll that fucking convoy." When I was like a little kid, <laughs> <laughs> and I never, I just thought I didn't know the words. I never really knew that they were saying, "Roll this trucking convoy." You know? <laughs> and I would later go on to make a song called. What's the song where I swear a bunch and uh, oh, friendly goodbye, friendly goodbye, where I say mother trucker and some other choice non curse words. Uh, yeah, I mean he's got like ten right. Does he just win or what? Like what happens? So we're, we're on question five, I don't know. right? This is your game. We're on question five. All right. All right, question number five. You're doing great, David Dooley and friend. <laughs> <laughs> Randy's always off camera. She doesn't like to be on camera. In the, uh, That's correct. And the thing, but you can just hear her over there giving him the answers and shit. It's, it's the best. Kate Hudson. On some movies, on some movies, yeah. I will admit she it's, gives me more than I make up it's myself. Kate Hudson. <laughs> uh, so we uh, <laughs> we okay. We're on question five. Question number five. Um, this will get into maybe later one of uh, Will's bits oh. um, that he gets to do, but I do have to ask just because. Um, I think it's very, very important. Kurt Russell was the star of a certain superhero movie of which I did the a major song in that movie. I also did a video for it where my girlfriend in the movie was 16 years old. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Creepily. And Kurt Russell was actually appeared in the video, but not by choice. Can you name <laughs> the movie? High School High, is that right? That is, it is so close that you get it right. It's called Sky High. All you had to do was leave the first high off. That was the uh, remake. Did, of I did you, right? see it. Yes, you did. Yeah, thank you very much. You're you're very welcome. And uh, yes, and Will uh, did say that we remade the song "Melt with You." My, but the best part of that is I had to change the words because it, it was uh, uh, "Making love to you was never second best," and Would so they were like, they were like, "You got to change it to being friends with you was." <laughs> 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 well, it was Disney. Yeah. Giving back rubs was never second. <laughs> the craziest thing is the 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 guy who directed that movie. Shaking w- hands with. Oh, I'm a little. Was uh, a little late, sorry. Barry <laughs> is it Barry Marshall? Penny Marshall's brother? Who was Gary? Gary Marshall. It was his son, actually. Oh. And so, uh, big time Hollywood there. And it just is big time Hollywood. Yeah, just directing me in a video. How about that? 
All awesome. right, guys, Dooley family, we love you. Thank you so much for being a part of the podcast and for Wait, always supporting bonus our stuff. Question. No, we don't do. Oh, we do a bonus question. That's right. <laughs> I Sorry. need one from Cubers. I'm honestly, I just start drowning you out because you're fucking interrupting me all the time. <laughs> I'm like, you're doing this thing where you're cross talking to Will now. It's a new, I don't, is it a new bit? Am I I, just to frustrate me? Like, no, what's happening? When I interrupt, it's funny. When you interrupt, it's fucking <laughs> annoying. I was just giving Will props when you would steal his jokes and they would laugh at it. So I was like, good joke, Will. What joke did I steal? The Kate Hudson. Anyway, um, what? David Dooley. <laughs> hey, Rich Coleman. <laughs> Have you ever had big trouble in your little China? Not that I can admit on a podcast. That is that correct. Is correct. <laughs> Absolutely. Can we leave my little China out of this, please? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, Rich is dating now, so his questions will be off the cuff from now on, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was trying to Prep trying, time has gone to hell in a handbasket. Trying to get across. <laughs> it's right, a social man. life. We're going to see Good what we see can do. Guys. Good to see you, too, dude. Have Bye, a fantastic David. rest of the week. We'll talk you, to you David. soon. You, too. All you guys have a good night. See you, ya. too, man. Bye. That's why Jack was giving him such shit because he's like, it's been two thousand years, dude. You can't find but a I'm girl. But I'm serious. Like, what's the deal? He's like, now I'll marry both of you. Like, what? Yeah. I mean, why? Fuck this why? Guy. Who are you? Yeah. It's not fucking sister wives. That's gonna get well, complicated. Well, also, like, the, the uh, we're led to believe that he's gonna marry. He has to marry a Chinese woman with green eyes. But right. Then, eh, guess it's kind of like iffy. It's, yeah. And then it's really just sure. some random other lady with green eyes, and he's just like, fuck it. I want to be on sister wives. <laughs> right. He's, I mean, he is showing a little restraint. He's only having two wives. Yeah, Honestly, if you true. do that, like TLC will front you a cul-de-sac. One hundred percent in <laughs> Vegas, Although, for Christ's sake. Further in the movie, though, he, Mao, Miao Yen is the only one he's poking with the thing. He's not poking, mm. so it's just kind he of a does bonus. poke her, and then he eats, then he licks her blood, like uh, because when he. But it's Miao Yen. It's not. Oh, I thought when he poked Mao Yen, uh, he started bleeding. No, he made her bleed, and, and the blood touched him, meaning he was oh, okay. solid. That, did did you see her flinch like crazy? Yeah, because he, he actually did it. Yeah. He actually poked her. I totally saw that. Yeah. 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 She was like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah. <laughs> totally saw that. I just didn't know if like maybe like somebody had said something in the background or what was happening. But yeah, it was a super weird yeah. moment. So it's quite a ceremony. They, uh, they go into this room, and it looks like... Um, a bunch of the clubs in LA or in uh, or pre- basically uh, I'm gonna go I'm with gonna go neon skull I'm gonna go Cancun it looks like a club in Cancun with the lights on the, and the slides Hedon- yeah it's yeah. He- hedonism too it's hedonism too with the lights on we yeah. never made it to the Cancun clubs we always went to bed at like eight <laughs> but we make up for it during the daytime woo oh what yeah we- like getting hammered at a pool oh and sing karaoke. We had a bunch of ex- excursions planned. Like, let's get on this boat and we'll go watch these people. And then it's like, eh, we're gonna take a nap at like six. And you wake up at like three in the morning watching Nancy Grace in Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> so where, so what was this room? Because they're like coming down on escalators. I know <laughs> this had to be like a shopping mall right. that they took over. Yeah. Because the esca- I was like, that has to be a shopping mall. Yeah. The escalator going up was super confusing to me. <laughs> yeah. Because like at the end, because he like runs up it, and so I thought, is that so it looks faster and it's just like a really bad shot? I mean, I get it; it's supposed to be hilarious. <laughs> Were they real? Yeah, dressed for Lopez's wedding. What's in the flask, egg? Magic potion? Yeah, thought so. Good. What do we do? Drink it? Yeah, good. I thought so. Yeah, <laughs> let's get in there. <laughs> let's get in there. Yeah, whatever. You You're know? supposed to drink it? Yeah. It's a magic potion. What did you drink so. it? Thought so. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I like when they're going down the elevator. I feel very positive about all yeah. this. Yeah. All of exactly. that. He's like, is it getting warm in here? That is exactly <laughs> yeah. how I feel at about 1230 a.m. at a bar with Fireball. I'm like, I'm like, what's this? Does it make me happy? Okay, awesome. Let's do it. Like, this would be great. <laughs> So they're, Same thing. they're they're trying to get through the one door, and he just goes, "It's hollow." He goes, "Hollow, yeah, fuck, fuck it." it. <laughs> it's like paper. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you notice when you? Because you said, "Is it getting hot in here?" Yeah. He makes a comment later on um, about the temperature to the girl uh, when they're going up or something. And he goes, "Yeah, it'll get cooler when we go yeah, up." Yeah, when we go up. Like, yeah. yeah. Where does this go? Up. To his office, Low Pan's office. It's cooler up there. From, from there. <laughs> Do you yeah, have a gun? That's I it. Hope? Have a knife. Nice. This guy's twelve feet tall. Seven. Hey, don't worry. I can handle him. I took something. 
I can see things no one else can see. Why are you dressed like that? I, I, I was getting married. He, he was marrying both of us just because uh, my eyes are green too. I guess. I mean. <laughs> There's a lot, so much explaining. And then they kiss, right? And he leaves. And then he has all, all the lipstick on. That was genius. He's running around with lipstick on because yeah. they kiss. Yeah, and, and well, and the funny thing is, it's not even like spread out over his no, mouth. It's like real, real super it's pointy, like Betty, Betty, like Boop. Betty Boop. Exactly. I thought the same thing. Like it's like Betty Boop. Okay, so at this point, I think I was starting to get the movie. Yeah. I was starting to laugh a lot. Yeah, you're not supposed to think this movie is great. Yeah, no, it's yeah. it's camp and it's fun and it's it is what it is. Not so fast, gentlemen. Oh, is it too much to ask, Thunder? Kill him for me. <laughs> Won't solve anything, Dave. Too many people around here been dropping like flies already, and where's that getting us, huh? Nowhere fast. Ah, you know what old Jack Burton always says at a time like this? Who? Cool. Jack Burton. Me. <laughs> Jack always says, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then the ninja guy fucking just flies in. And then uh, we get an, it's all in the reflexes moment. It's flashback to the, what well, got us here in the right, first place. Right. And then a fucking guy blows up. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. He thunders himself to death? Yeah. What is that? Something happens. It's and he, wind. Yeah. I guess. You guys got this figured out. I'm still confused about who's what. <laughs> that guy's the thunder guy, yeah, right? He's thunder, yeah. 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 I, I I didn't really understand why how that helped him. I thought it was just a deal where it's like, okay, we all just self destruct because the master's gone. No, I think he was really upset about it. Might have happened. I just thought it was a really cool special effect that they wanted to use and they had run out of time in the movie to use it. So it, <laughs> yeah, it like it, it, earlier in the movie, it could have been a bad bee sting, <laughs> you know, like it just fucking, you know, something like that. It's like, I don't know. I mean, I, the I mean, spider bite. It was I love my wife, but I mean, you know, it could be a fucking uh, shellfish allergy. I mean, you know, that happens. It, it, was, does it, happen. was, it was so cartoony. It reminded me of the Twilight Zone movie almost, you know, that with yeah. the kid that can wish for things. Yeah. It was very mm. slapsticky, cartoony. Definitely. Right. Well, last chance. I'm a rich man now. Give up the open road, sell my truck, settle down. Couldn't have that in my conscience. The only way it might work is if you buy a bigger truck. One with a cozy little apartment in back, just big enough for two. Sounds pretty great. But you know something? Sooner or later, I rub everybody the wrong way, and... Well, let me think about it. <laughs> what? Aren't you even going to kiss her goodbye? No. Nope. See you around, Burton. Never can tell. Bye, Jack. We really shook the pillars of heaven, didn't we, Wang? No horse shit, Jack. No, no horse shit. shit. <laughs> I mean, she wants to sleep with you. You're two consenting adults. Yeah. Well, you, you know what? It's been, a long, it's been a long couple days. Like That's true. Yep. He's just like, or one or day, later. right? This, I don't all wanna... happened in, this all happened in one day? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't want to go through any of this shit. It was just, just like, like Fifty Shades of Grey. He's like, red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only not a hot billionaire. Oh, man. He had a couple thousand dollars. <laughs> That's true. Well, and if this was supposed to be made in the 1800s, it's a shitload of money. That's yeah. true. Yeah. They, forget, they, they, they forgot, forgot to the, up the amount. Yeah, they forget to edit the script. In the 1800s? So yeah, it's like he's got like four grand. <laughs> he's like a like, rich man yeah, now. I'm a rich, I'm rich man, man now. now. Did he ever get his truck back? Sell so my truck. Yeah, yeah. He did. yeah, he gets his truck and they, they escape. Find it. They escape with the they truck. They conveniently find it in a warehouse. They find it in a warehouse. Pristine. I think Everything's they Everything's fine. Did they, they, waxed it, it, did they play they the smoking it, the bandit song? <laughs> he is down and down. <laughs> man drugging. He was on the wrong channel. Yeah, because that fucking system was complicated. It was so complicated. So complicated. Oh, man, we did it, guys. We made it through. Let's, uh, any last. I, did, I didn't make it through. <laughs> she did not make it through. Any last thoughts from you guys on uh, Big Trouble in Little China? I don't China? know. It's, a, it's one of those movies. I get why Casey hates the shit out of it, but I just love it. It's awesome. Uh, I think if I were to see it on again, I'd probably watch it. And, and with probably a new perspective. with a new perspective. I don't even think hates the word. I think it's just complete disinterest. Like nothing yeah, about sure. this like held my interest. Okay. Will I get that? I not love, for millennials. I love this movie. Ever since I was a kid, I love this movie, and I, I know it's a stupid movie, but 
I love it. Yeah. yeah. Can I say something though? Like, I feel like this movie is what you would feel rich at least like watching Rocky Horror Picture Show. Yeah. I feel like it's exactly the same, and I love that movie, but yeah. I know it makes no sense and it's stupid. I'm, I'm almost positive that's true. It's probably exactly the same. Agreed. Well, uh, you know, I think the cool thing is when you do cult classics, you know, you're all going to have opinions, and you're either going to be, uh, you know, hard at it, or you're going to be converted, or whatever. And mm-hmm. so, uh, or you're going to f- be a sweet transvestite. I feel like I'm sort of in the middle a little bit on this one. I think I, st- I started out. What do you mean? You're a middle kind of guy. Uh, I pretty much can find anything in anything that I like, um, except for uh, biting my fingernails into the quick. Um, (laughs) Stubbing your toe. Stubbing my toe. Explosive diarrhea while I uh, have a phone call happening. Um, (laughs) There's a couple of more I'm sure I can think of. But uh, but I really, you know, look, I enjoyed talking about Big Trouble in Little China, and that's why I think this podcast is so fantastic. And uh, thank you guys all very much for, oh my God, look at this. Let's check the email box, email us at Jared goes to the movies at gmail.com. Angie Larice writes, so a while ago, you all asked for ideas, specifically quotes for merch for the podcast, and I have been randomly jotting stuff down. I know Jared will do whatever the fuck he wants to do anyway. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> So besides my hashtag Team Casey stuff and hashtag Team Rich, I guess, (laughs) here are a few ideas. I guess, too. I I was reading this at work, and I fucking gut-busted laughing when I read the Team Rich, I guess. All right, so here are the few ideas. As you know, I'm not really a big fan of remakes. Uh, Benefit of the Doubt Guy is one we just heard. I think we should change the first one to Remakes Can Suck It. There you go. Um, Except for Arthur... Let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that will never happen. Um, here's another one. I think she was listening back to older podcasts, but uh, no, because I'm not a fucking nerd. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Um, obvious one. Movie commentary with no movie knowledge. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Let's be honest about something. This movie blows. <laughs> <laughs> she must have just watched the bird or listened to the birds. <laughs> um, something that says I was body shamed by Rich. Uh, that's fucking genius. I want that. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. We'll yeah. do that as a tank top. <laughs> you know, like a True. fucking like a crop tank top. Yeah, you know, something like that. <laughs> a crop top. You like a bra because do... nobody can see it because you're ashamed. <laughs> uh, she wants us to do something with Roadhouse. She's not sure what though. And then I also like it's not a bad haircut. Your hair blows. Sorry. <laughs> That's pretty fucking great. It's not a bad haircut. Your hair blows. I will sell those at my salon. Your hair just sucks. I can't help if your hair sucks. (laughs) Richard. She says she knows a ton of hairstylists that would buy that one. Yeah, I would sell them. Um, Oh, and I would also love a Jarrett Goes to the Movies Hydro Flask Pint Glasses. So you should do those. Oh, actually, we um, we just got a line on pint glasses and shot glasses that we can do. Okay. Um... We kind of have to do them in the UK to print them up, which is great because I know a lot of our fan base is there. Mm-hmm. Um, I just got to try to figure out getting them over here to make sure that it makes sense to do it. But I think we can do those like pint glasses at a reasonable price. And I think that that makes a lot of in sense. In the same merch store or some a different merch store? No, no, no. I'm just saying like we want to get them back here or whatever. We'll eventually have an England merch store as well. Okay. UK merch store well ladies and gentlemen thank you guys so very much for listening to this that's going to sound like an edit by the way it's <laughs> totally going to sound like you just edited the shit out of that uh, man this has been fun it's been a fun night yeah. um, you know uh, we did the burbs and uh, which we, was fun it was a terrible movie we had fun doing it I like it. the burbs you know I still maintain that I like the burbs I just think that it's funny in a different way than we approached it and you know what that happens uh, Wedding Crashers was a little odd. Uh, it was just an off night. It was weird. Casey wasn't here. Um, Sorry. Me and Will were in bad moods. Yeah, I think it still came out okay, but it was a weird night. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad we bounced back tonight for sure. Yeah. Is that what happened? We bounced yeah, I just, back. I just chalked it up to being Tuesday, but then now t- today's Tuesday. We fucking, fucking killed it. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we got to get you guys to bed because it's a work day tomorrow. Yep. Same here. I got to be up 
early, early to take the kids to school. Um, thank you guys so so much for listening to Jarrett Goes the Movies. You can find us anywhere you want on the internet by searching Jarrett Goes the Movies. JarrettGoesTheMovies.com is also a great place. We're at Jarrett Movies on Twitter and Instagram. As I said earlier, we never, we never get any responses on Facebook, YouTube, Reddit, Pinterest, Patreon, <laughs> Google Plus, and Tumblr. But you can check us out there by searching Jarrett Goes the Movies there. Find me on all the socials at J-A-R-E-T-2113. Find Rich on all the socials at Rich Coleman TX and Casey at C-A-S-E-Y-Y-A-N-T. And then Will with one L, Will Vark. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're fucking back. I'm going on tour. We'll see you down the road. (laughs) 